de Jesus prometeu coisa melhor para quem vive neste mundo. Rossi Sal, by Gilberto Gil. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermin Sheikh. We turn now to Brazil, which is witnessing some of its largest protests in decades. On Monday, more than 240,000 protesters took to the streets across Brazil. Another 50,000 rallied last night in Sao Paulo, Brazil's largest city. In response, the Brazilian government is deploying the National Public Security Force to five major cities. The protests were initially sparked by an increase in bus fares in Sao Paulo, but the uprising soon spiraled nationwide amid outrage over government corruption, inequality failing public services and pr police brutality against demonstrators. Protesters have also condemned the high level of government spending on the 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Summer Olympics. This is José de Freitas, an 80-year-old protester in Sao Paulo. We took a long time to wake up. What we have here is a fake democracy. It isn't democracy. We fought against the political dictatorship, and now we're fighting against a monopolistic dictatorship. Well, to talk more about the protests, we're joined now via Democracy Now! video stream by Lucia Nader in Sao Paulo, executive director of Conectas, a Brazil-based human rights group. She's been participating in the protests there. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Lucia, how did these protests begin? What sparked them, and what are you demanding? Good morning, Amy. Good morning, all. Um, so the protest started, as you said, as a claim not to increase the bus fare in Sao Paulo. And what happened was that uh, here in the city of Sao Paulo, we had two protests last Tuesday and last Thursday that were quite small and focusing on the on the bus fare issue in the in the city. But on Thursday, there was a huge repression by the police, using a lot of violence. Some uh, staff from Connectas were there. Some people from Connectas were there and saw and suffered with the violence. Uh, and after this violence and after the big repression from the police, uh, all the country started to claim for other specific demands, some of them against this police violence, some of them against corruption, several of them still focusing on the bus fare, other people asking for uh, political reform, other questioning the, the expenditures with the World Cup and what is being spent with education and health in a comparison and things like this. So today what we live in Brazil is a widespread national protest with very different claims, somehow sometimes contradictory one to each other. Uh, Lucia, could you also explain how the government has so far responded uh, to the protests? Yeah, the government, uh, it's important to say that in Brazil we have three levels of government. We have the city government, the state government, 26 states plus the DC, the federal district for us, and uh, the federal government, let's say. So uh, it's uh, in, in the city, in the state and city of Sao Paulo, is quite uh, an interesting situation because the city of Sao Paulo is governed by the Workers' Party, uh, which is the same of, the, of President Dilma Rousseff. And the state of Sao Paulo is governed by the op opposition. But uh, to answer your question, what happened is that at the beginning, all the, the, all the three levels of the government were quite quiet about it, or uh, somehow supporting the violence uh, by the police on Thursday and giving some mixed messages of uh, in what side they were. Yesterday, President Rousseff came to the TV and during an opening of an event and spoke for five minutes about the situation, saying that she's hearing what is coming from the street and her government is trying to answer to that. Lucia, we have co the comments of President Rousseff, uh, which she made on Tuesday, explaining the roots of the protest. Essa mensagem direta. This direct message from the streets is to improve civility, for better schools, for better hospitals, for better health services, and for the right to participate. This direct message from the streets is to demand quality public transport at fair prices. The direct message from the streets is to reject corruption and the poor use of public money. That's Brazil's President Rousseff. Um, Lucia, if you could respond to her and, in this final comment, uh, say where this protest, you believe, is headed. 
it's difficult to say where the protest is heading. Today, the country is uh, is uh, focusing on several claims. Uh, this morning, some protests started in uh, other parts of the city that not the rich neighborhood, as it was up to now. And But I believe that it's healthy anyway, that the population is on the street. But somehow we fear also that the discussion is being uh, it's, it's taking a path that can weaken the democratic institutions and the several achievements that Brazil had in the last decades. Lucia Nader, we want to thank you for being with us, executive director of Connect Us, a Brazil-based human rights group. She's been participating in the protests, speaking to us from Sao Paulo by the Democracy Now! audio stream. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.